it worked. Of course, I believe in the power of prayer. I think you, you know that, right? <laughs> I did a lot of that. I do a lot of that during the session. Uh, well, I mean, just going from there, how, I mean, does God influence the decisions you make in the Capitol? Uh, please how, how does your faith and, and your belief in God influence your decisions in the Capitol? Well, it's everything. I mean, uh, on a daily basis, uh, my faith uh, comes into play. It, it always has uh, since 1987. Uh, uh, being one of 10 kids, uh, growing up, you know, with a father and mother who really truly loved us, we never thought we were, we never realized how poor we were. You know, we came from modest uh, means. Uh, we even lived for a couple of years in government housing. We didn't think anything of it. We just, um, we were thankful uh, we had housing, you know, and, and it relates back to, to, you know, what the Bible says, you know. I was hungry, you fed me. And of course, I worked on a many hunger bills, as you know, and uh, I was uh, homeless and you gave me shelter. I really believe that I've been blessed and given an opportunity to reflect not only on my life, but on the life of others. And that that is a major responsibility to me to not forget, you know, where I've been and, and never to forget that there are people today that are much less fortunate than uh, we were back then and of course today. So. My, my faith uh, plays a, a vital part in my decision making, how I feel about uh, the policy making that we have to partake in. So it, um, it helps me and it, uh, a lot of people quite frankly tell me, boy, that must have been a hard decision for you. I says, no, probably the easiest one of all, you know. What uh, I, issue are they referencing there? Sorry? What what was a hard decision or that must have been? Well, the light, for example, the, the pro-life issues or the abortion bill and people ask, man, that must really weigh heavy on you. I says, no. No, it would weigh heavy on me if I did not vote the way I feel in my heart about those issues. I, I you know, being one of 10 kids, um, one of which was an adopted uh, little girl who is not 62 years old. She, my daddy brought her home, just a little baby. I remember her. Uh, I'm seven, I was seven years old at the time, six, six years old when she was brought home. And I, I just, uh, I just was amazed at the love that my mom and dad showed to uh, this little girl who was very sick. And we thought we we're gonna, was gonna die, but we, my parents saved her life. Uh, it taught me then to, to be compassionate to people, uh, to children, and also to protect the, uh, the unborn, uh, which I try to do, um, and and I will continue as long as I'm in that position. Um, I hope that others realize that it's it's a, an incredible responsibility when when those things come up. Uh, I've been charged by many not having any compassion for women, but. It's the other way around. I have tremendous amount of love and compassion. Uh, my mother, I love her dearly. She's 90. My four sisters, my wife, my daughter, uh, uh, 60 girl cousins, <laughs> female cousins, um, at least. Um, I love them dearly. My best friends, um, I'll do anything to accommodate them and make sure I vote for the funding that they need for basic needs in everyday life, uh, education, health care, housing. Those are important issues. And of course, um, I've, I've, I've always also been a business legislator. I, I believe that by helping business, we can help create jobs and opportunities that will give people dignity and respect as they, you know, as they go about their lives. I, People want to work. People want to maintain their households. So those are things that I have been very involved over the last uh, 30 years in, as a legislator. When you say that people come up to you and say that must have been a tough decision, is it more that you're the lone Democrat sometimes voting that way? Yeah, maybe so. Um, they're, they're asking me how, 
that pits me against my party. Um, I, I'm going to tell you, I, on that floor, I, 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 I think about it real hard, and I make it clear to myself that we, we should not be there based on, on party labels. We should be there as men and women uh, that come from different areas of this great state, uh, representing 27 million um, in, in their basic needs in life. Uh, I, yes, it, at times I've felt it a little bit. Uh, I, I shouldn't say I've never felt it. I, I have. Um, they haven't said much to me, but we've had an exchange. Uh, I had one with a with a with a, one of the one of my my colleagues in the on the Democratic side. I said, you know, you, it, my faith teaches us to be pro-life. You know, uh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Democratic. Catholic, pro-life, lifetime. I'm going to talk to you about what lifetime means in a minute, but I'm a pro. Uh, uh, I'm a Democrat, pro-lifetime, Catholic, and and he said, "Well, I'm a pro-choice." I says, "Catholic." I says, and I says, "No offense, I don't think there's such a thing. Uh, you you can't be a Christian and and know about." Uh, and, and know what it means to be a Christian and the things that we stand for as Christians and, and be pro-choice. Uh, please forgive me, but I, I just don't understand it, how we can pick and choose how we want to be, even if our faith tells us one thing, we do others that might be politically correct, maybe, uh, depending on where you live in this state. Um, but I don't even look at that. I, I might not be reelected in Austin, Texas, probably, you know, because it's a more liberal community. But I would still vote the same way, and and hope to, I would hope to have an opportunity to discuss and elaborate on the issues to let people know why I felt the way I did. You hit on it a little bit right now, just talking about somebody who's saying they're a pro-choice Christian. How do you mitigate that? Do you feel like you have a, a, a duty or an obligation to uh, balance, you know, religious beliefs with your duties as a, a state official? Well, first of all, I don't think there, there's, there's any way I can separate what, what people call separation of church and state. There is just no way I can do that. There's nothing in the U.S. Constitution that says that uh, we should do that. There's no, no, nowhere can you find, can someone point to me and say separation of church and state. There's no such statement in the U.S. Constitution. To me, uh, I can't do that. Uh, I, I've, some people say you've taken a bold step in, in endorsing the U.S. Uh, uh, Conference of, of Bishops in the state, there's 15 dioceses in Texas. I got into my suburban and drove the whole state, uh, uh, visiting with these bishops um, in every corner of the state to discuss the issues that we were going to take up this session, this last session, on immigration and health care and and education and and um, uh, uh, you know other 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 issues that that you know were important to them. Because I've endorsed their their uh, their platform, uh, I really truly believe that they represent uh, the Christian values that I live by, and that they support the issues uh, uh, that that I um, that I too support. So uh, I, I, I I never wavered. If you, if you look at my voting record, uh, I I would always check with them on amendments as well to see how that would that would come out so <clears throat> i i've tried my best to stay on 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 that road that i consider uh, a road of faith that would lead me to the decision making um, but uh, obviously people might disagree with me and, and that's okay we can't all think alike uh, but i would try my best, um, I send a daily prayer to each one of my colleagues every day, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, 
and and if if they care to read it or digest it, it that's their decision. But I still feel it's a duty that I have, a responsibility, to share the good news, as I see it. That has allowed me to feel like I do, and and um, to make a difference. Uh, uh, if you study my what I've done in the last, uh, at, least, at least in the Senate, uh, I became uh, uh, quite much more effective uh, than I was in the House because there were so many. And I was, uh, I was in the House four years and I had made a lot of wonderful friends. Many of those followed me to the Senate after I took the bold step in 1990. But um, I have a responsibility to, to communicate these issues with, with not only my delegation, but everyone in the in the legislature. So, I think I think it's I think they understand where where I'm coming from, and um, I'm I'm a little uh, critical. Yes, I am. And and the speech that I made, especially on the abortion bill, if you might remember, I I was critical of the Republicans for not being pro-life time. They they. They're pro-life, want, want a child to be born. That's wonderful. But after that, we still have a responsibility to that child. Um, that child might, might be poor, might be rich. It doesn't matter. We, should, we need to find out what we as a state can do to foster uh, you know, uh, their lives and to, to, to create a better quality of life, whether it's education, health care, et cetera. On the other side, uh, the Democrats uh, will fight tooth and nail, you know, to on um, funding for everything under the world, you know, for for the seniors and for, for the poor and for uh, the, those children with special needs. But but they're pro-choice. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, to me, it's not consistent on either side. But hey, I'll, uh, I, I respect them all. I hope to work with them. And we, we made good friendships. So we've established good friendships on both sides of the aisle. Right now I'm enjoying uh, working with the new lieutenant governor. I think, I think he is a true blue to his faith. Uh, when he took a bold step in, in, uh, in suggesting that we put in God we trust over the president's podium, I said, wow, uh, this guy might be for real, you know, and I, um, I debated, you know, some issues uh, when he carried the bill on uh, doing away with the Dream Act, you know, in Texas. I, I fought him tooth and nail, and you know, he was he was uh, bold enough to step away from the issue. I, I respected him from for that, uh, just like Senator Colhurst was was, uh, you know, ex uh, didn't pursue her piece of legislation that also led to would lead to to you know putting an end to 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 that to to those that um, have been here at no choice of their own it's a big issue you know it and i certainly w want to continue to make sure we don't end anybody's dream of becoming an american citizen uh, and many of these young people obviously can can play a vital role in the future of our country so so we'll, we'll continue to, to do everything we can, I can, uh, but I take it as a major responsibility for me to voice that opinion. Senator, let me pause real quick. Just sometimes it just runs a little. Okay. There we go. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I know another issue that came up was um, right, I think it was right towards the end of the session, the resolution relating yes. to same-sex marriage. Um, I believe, again, you were the lone Democrat on that resolution. Since then, we have had the Supreme Court ruling. Is that um, a stance you take as a result of your faith? Well, you know, first of all, um, I was asked to sign the resolution itself, and I I didn't do that. Uh, I felt that I would, I would still support it, uh, and I spoke, as you know, in favor of it on the floor. Um, I, you know, respect 
the way people voted. I, I, I just want to say that a marriage uh, is taught to us by, by the church and, and Christ's teachings between man and a woman uh, is a, a union that is holy, very holy. And uh, marriage, according to the majority of the Supreme Court, uh, between same-sex partners is, is lawful. Okay, it's lawful. Uh, but both are, are not lawful, but, but only one is holy. That's the way I look at it. Um, thankfully, uh, just like uh, the Supreme Court cannot uh, redefine what uh, constitutes a holy baptism, and a holy communion, the Supreme Court is lacking, in my belief, in their ability to define what is a holy union of marriage under uh, the Christian faith. I, uh, I wrote that down uh, yesterday afternoon. I wanted to share that because that's the way I felt. Um, and again, it's, um, it's we'll wait and see where this all leads us. Um, but as you've seen the reaction around the country, one in Tennessee, I believe, where the county clerk and the entire staff, you know, just resigned because of their faith, um, not wanting to be a part of issuing a permit. I, I heard a beautiful sermon s s Sunday. Uh, I, I attend several Catholic churches. I, I belong to the Immaculate Conception Cathedral in Brownsville. That's where I go all the time. But once in a while I go to other churches and I happen to go to one in San Benito uh, where Father Joe Vialon was just, just to me um, made a, a compelling case about how we treat our homosexual brothers and sisters. He said, what do I do if they come here and I agreed with him wholeheartedly, by the way. Um, he says, I would welcome them. I would treat them with compassion and understanding. I would do whatever I could because, to let them know that that's the refuge they need, the church, he said. But I, I have to, in, in the best way I can, let them know that the Jesus and what I believe in and the faith that we believe in would not condone that if they were here present talking about um, where this began in terms of Adam and Eve and, and, and the traditional family that we've all been taught to respect uh, and, and live by. So I, um, I, I join uh, Father Villalon in, in saying, I, I, I do embrace all people. I voted already once to make sure that they had the, uh, the benefits necessary and in insurance policies a session or two ago. I remember I did uh, because I don't want to close the door for them on that. It's just that I just um, believe in traditional uh, marriage and and I will continue to support that effort. Now, if that costs me politically, it's okay. It it does. It won't. It won't bother me. What what bothers me is for people not to be respectful of how we feel now. If you want someone, and, and this is where politics comes in. If you want someone to support your position, well, you elect someone that supports that platform. That. That's what you have to do. I'm not telling people, hey, go out there and rush, try to fight a, an opponent for me, but that is, that is, you know, political way of doing it. And, and it's a democratic way of addressing who your lawmakers and your decision makers are. Um, but, but I continue to do what I can to make sure that I'm pro-lifetime and that I that I accept um, those that uh, um, have declared themselves as homosexuals and um, do whatever I can to, to uh, support 
issues that will make sure there's not discrimination in the workplace, make sure that there's health care uh, opportunities, um, uh, and, and those things that have been brought to light over the last few years. So I, um, that's where I stand. Are you in the camp that says just take divorce marriage from government and get government out of the way when it comes to verifying or solidifying marriages? Well, you know, a lot of these issues are moral issues, and they should be legislated, quite frankly. I agree with that. But when they come to, to, to us as policy-making items or issues, then um, you have to act on them. And, and again, my faith, my faith uh, leads me to, to, to vote the way I do, you know. And, that's all I can do uh, if they don't come before us. Obviously, the Supreme Court uh, uh, or, the, or the federal government might find, uh, you know, their own, their own way of addressing those issues, which is okay with me, but that doesn't mean uh, I'm going to go out and, and condone it and embrace it. I, I did have an opportunity... Uh, a few years ago in San Antonio, as I stopped to, to have dinner on the way back to the district to see two homosexual men necking on the waiting line, uh, you know, and I, I just I just looked at it and then I turned. I, I didn't voice an opinion to him. I didn't say anything. I, but I just didn't feel that that was appropriate in my point of view. Uh, but maybe to others, it's it's okay. It's permissible. Uh, America is a great country, uh, great opportunities, uh, and I know that people born in different generations and different eras uh, are going to feel different. I I'm a product of the greater generation that that taught us certain, you know. Uh, certain things that, that led to where I am today in terms of my faith. Uh, so I, that's why I am the way I am, <laughs> and I decide the way I decide because uh, that's what I've learned. Your son is part of that next generation, and we did speak with him uh, on this topic. He feels very differently on some of these issues that we, we've spoken about. Is that just a generational thing? He says he has his faith, but... It, it doesn't have to be just a generational thing, uh, uh, in my point of view. I would hope that it's traditions is is very important. It's a cultural thing as well. You know, it's it's very important, and I think it's important to carry over, and to teach, you know, your children and uh, your grandchildren, you know, what made this country great. This country was founded under God. Not, it was founded under God. This state took, took a vote to put Texas under God in their pledge to the flag. Uh, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, without faith, there's no semblance of order uh, in my point of view. So um, I, I, I'm just grateful I'm living in the era that I'm living and, and that I had an opportunity. God has a plan, the way I see it. I lost a race in 1982. I'll give you an example of why I say that. And I was, I was running for re-election as a county commissioner here, and I wanted to stay here, wanted to be a county judge. But I lost my re-election bid, and I was in charge of redistricting at the time. Um, I, I not questioned God. I says, why? You know, I've, I've dedicated myself. I, you know, I'm... Uh, True blue to trying to help people and do everything I can, follow the rules, do this, do that, and I lost and I and I questioned him. But you know he had a plan. <laughs> he had a plan for me. I didn't know at the time, and and the rest is history, because I ran for state rep and I won, state senator, and I st here I am. Uh, I don't know when I'm come. To, I'll come to my crossroads. It it could be soon. It could be later, only God knows. So I, 
I truly believe that that there's a plan, a a plan, part of a costume scheme that we can't we don't we can't figure out because we don't have that fine line understanding that 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 God has, and I I believe that with all my heart. Right now, do you intend to run again? Absolutely, I'm making my. Uh, I'm announcing in the next two, three weeks, I'm, I'm making a three-day swing through my five-county district, and I, I will be having different, different, different towns that I will be stopping. Uh, Brownsville, for example, because of its size, will be one stop, and then I want to go on. In Cameron County, there'll be three stops. Um, Port Isabel, South Padre, and Laguna Vista, those areas, and then San Benito, Harlingen, and La Feria, and Santa Rosa, that area, and then go on to Hidalgo and do the same thing with communities. I, I, um, I love the issues. I really do, especially quality of life issues. I, I really do. I, I want people to know that they have a responsibility. I tell Hispanic families, I say, you know, we find ourselves with 53 going on 54 percent of the school population in all of Texas are Hispanic, and then it'll be 60 percent 2020. What does that tell you? I asked them. What does what does that mean to you? Or what should that mean to you? And of course they uh, says, well, what should I be thinking? I said, well, you sh you should be responsible in educating your children or your grandchildren. Make sure that they 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 play a contributing type of uh, uh, part in the future. Uh, no matter what they become, they can play an integral part in our society. So we have a major responsibility because of the growth in the Hispanic community. I tell them to make sure they're educated, they're healthy, but also, you know, I I would hope that a little bit of faith comes into the teachings as well. Um, we can become a stronger nation. Uh, you know, as I travel around visiting different groups, I, I love to visit veterans groups. And the reason, and I'm not a veteran, but my dad was a disabled American veteran, a veteran of foreign wars. He preached Americanism, patriotism, oh my goodness, every day of his life. Discipline, are you kidding me? We couldn't even blink an eye. Uh, but that's the group that prays for peace the most. No other group prays, not even the clergy, not even the church prays for peace as much, in my, in my estimation, as veterans. You know why? Because they understand. They understand, especially those that have been in battle, how hard it is to lose someone. And I don't think my dad wanted to lose his six sons. So he prayed a lot, and that's why he made us kneel every night during the 40-night period of the term of, the, of Lent so that we would pray, and he prayed for peace all the time. So, you know, we need to respect that. You mentioned education, and that was somewhat at the forefront this session with pre-K and Lieutenant Governor uh, Patrick's advisory council calling Abbott's pre-K plan a godless environment. Uh, what are your views on pre-K when it comes to that idea of a godless environment? Oh my goodness, uh, I, I, I'm an educator by profession. <laughs> you know, you got you got to build a foundation for the rest of your life. It's an education to build it before kindergarten. To start building it before kindergarten, it's essential. It it has to happen. Uh, I, I, um, I was happy to hear the state of the state address by Governor Abbott actually his his priorities uh, address and I was very pleased that um, we were able to address that issue. Um, I, I personally had a bill that I passed using Brownsville, just Brownsville, this uh, BI uh, Brownsville Ind Independent School District now can have money that is left over by a student who graduates in three years instead of four. In other words, if 
which I did, by the way, in 1963. I was a class of 64. I graduated in 63. That means that the money that I would have received in 1964 would have gone into a special fund for those children that wanted to come to pre-K. And so I, I support, I really support um, those that can, can find a way of graduating early so that we can use that money. We shouldn't have to. I think we should dig in deep, okay? We have a, a major fund, a rainy day fund that we can use <laughs> uh, to help every kid in the state. And by the way, I, I, I think it not only should be for uh, the working poor kids, uh, families that, uh, that have children, the working poor, uh, those that qualify under our our, um, you know, our uh, guidelines, but it should be every child, every every child. We should treat everyone the same. Every everyone should be equal. Everyone should um, have an opportunity. That's the way I feel. Texas is not a poor state. Uh, we have the resources, and we can make things happen. Uh, I just met with uh, uh, the Secretary of uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, uh, Secretary Meade from Mexico City uh, this last week in Austin, Texas. They're reaching out to us, um, and we need to reach back out to them across across that border. And my intentions are to, is to fly to Mexico City to do that with a delegation of senators that hopefully can um, bring an awareness and understanding of how we can better uh, better help each other and provide uh, the needs uh, of our people, regardless uh, whether they're on the north side of the border or south side of the border. Um, we're in this together, and uh, we need to be a good neighbor as well when it comes to immigration issues and all. So I, uh, again, I let my faith be, be, be the one that guides me, you know, to be the thing that guides me to my final decision making, no matter what it is. Senator, one of the first issues you mentioned today was, and you keep bringing it up, the, the pro-life issue and that every, you know, life is created in the virtue of God. How does that then uh, shape your view about the death penalty? We need to be consistent. Yes, that's another thing that I will be very much involved with. Later this, this year, I'm sponsoring a, a, a very friendly demonstration, I say demonstration, march, a march at the Capitol. Uh, I want to meet the day before. I will be organizing uh, a mini conference or summit, call it what you want, on, on the death penalty. Um, I'm, I'm working with religious leaders from throughout the state uh, and others that want to, to uh, make a difference on that. We need to address it once and for all. Texas leads the country, as you well know, on uh, the, the prisoners we put to death. Um, I would like to see it stop. Uh, the measure that I passed on life without parole would be punishment enough, uh, in my opinion. And, you know, that's one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. It's, I, I can't put it any simpler than that in, in context. I, I would hope that um, we could be consistent. Uh, but here again, I find both parties being pro-birth, but pro-death on that, or you know, uh, pro-choice and then pro-life on, on the death penalty. Um, I, I would love to bring it together and, and make it one for all and all for one. <laughs> uh, and I, I think we can do that. Well, there's a will, there's a way. There, we can do that. I, I just believe we can. And I'm going to call on my Christian brothers and sisters and, and non-Christian brothers and sisters to, to think about that. Um, if we can come up with a policy that does away with that, not taking someone's life, no matter what that person had done, something's wrong with that person. So, I, 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 
I can't prejudge why uh, those things happen. There's heinous crimes, but all I can say is that uh, even even those that that kill um, should not be killed. The New Testament tells us that it no longer an eye for an eye like the Old Testament. You know, just hopefully we can we can address it and have a hearing. You know, sometimes we don't get hearings on our legislation. I didn't get one this last session with sim dealing simply with uh, requiring a, a woman that was seeking an abortion to, to have a one hour seminar, one hour uh, instruction on the benefits of adoption. That's all I wanted, just one hour. Here, this, is, this could happen and maybe we could save a life or two along the way. It didn't happen, I, I couldn't even get it. I changed it. I changed it from a one hour seminar to just hand them the materials. Just give them the materials on, on the benefits of adoption. I couldn't even get a hearing for that. And again, I'm not pointing the finger at anyone. I just um, could not, maybe it was in the chair. Maybe it was members from the committee telling the chair, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to hear it. Again, why, why? You know, I, I question. That's when I really get a little perturbed that, that for us not to even have the opportunity to bring it to the, to the table to discuss. So it would be highly disappointing for us to go to meet in Austin, to go through the process, get everybody together, talk about the issue, and then not even have a hearing. That, that would be disappointing to say the least.